calling the real playoffs in Philadelphia from the spectrum and enthusiastic crowd on hand. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Lieber, and working with me today, no stranger to NBA coaching circles. He's coached a winner in this league, the Washington Bullets, world champions, now the head coach of the expansion Dallas Mavericks, Dick Mata. Now, you work television, you got to get used to people talking into your ear. You know that, don't you, Dick? <laughs> hey, in my profession, people yell at me. I get about 12,000 a night telling me what to do. That's absolutely right. How do you look at this series? Should be a great one, shouldn't it? Oh, I, I love it. I, I'm happy that I'm involved with this thing. I'm I'm a basketball fan, uh, Frank, and I'd pay to watch this one. What's going to be the ultimate factor, the way you look at it? Well, I, I think the benches, from a coaching standpoint, from the fan uh, look inside, I, I think the contribution of the benches, I think they're the deepest in the league, and, and I, I, I believe in a long series it's going to come down to who, who performs well off the bench. Now, you've long been a proponent of the six-man. I know with Mick uh, Kupchak at Washington, you're looking at two of the best six-men in the league here, Bobby Jones and Junior Bridgman. No question about it. They're, they're both great players, and uh, they're going to pay a, play a significant role in the outcome of this series. We talked to Jones prior to the Game. You know, he used to be a starter with the 76ers, now the sixth man. How is he adjusted? Well, this team is really easy. We we play a, uh, a lot of men each game, seven or eight men at least, and uh, I knew I'd get a lot of time and really don't worry that much about my time as long as I contribute some way. Quite an honor to be the first six man selected to the NBA All-Star team. Well, it's a surprise. I was very pleased with it. I think it was more of a, a representation of, of our team. We've got so many good players on our team that uh, I was just fortunate to be chosen among them. Now, if he's not the best sixth man, I guess you'd have to say Junior Bridgman is. Well, statistically, uh, Junior has the best stats coming off the bench in the league this year. I consider him a fireman. When you play with fire, you gotta, uh, you start him, you got to put him out, too, and he's capable of doing both, both as a guard and a forward. Now, he has never been a starter in this league, and we asked him prior to the game about his mental preparedness, what he thinks about while he's sitting on the bench waiting to go in. Well, I think the main thing is trying to watch uh, maybe what Marcus is doing, or Brian, or Sydney, maybe somebody who I might be coming in for, and just see how they're playing their man defensively, uh, maybe what things seem to be working and what things aren't. And uh, just when I come in, if things are going well, just to keep them going well, and if not, maybe to change the momentum, uh, get a little spark, and maybe pick things up. There is some question about Caldwell Jones of the 76ers. He is scheduled to start, but he's got a bad ankle. He hurt it against the Pacers Thursday night. He's responded well to treatment, and Billy's decided to go with him. This is for the playoffs. This is the World Championship round, and you got to go after it. He did not work out yesterday, but he will start today. Big, big series between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Philadelphia 76ers and this wildly enthusiastic crowd here at the Spectrum. NBA on CBS. Today's playoff game is sponsored by Subaru, inexpensive and built to stay that way. Lowenbrow, when it's time for the taste of a truly great beer, let it be Lowenbrow. And by the U.S. Army, the Army, a great place to be all you can be. with a record of 62 and 20 on the regular season and Milwaukee with a record of 60 and 22. The second and third best records in the league, respectively. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. Sixers will be in white this afternoon and they'll go with their usual starting five. And that would include Andrew Tony at a guard position, or rather Lionel Hollins replacing Andrew Tony. Tony had started a good portion of the season, but he is not starting at the present time. Irving, Jones, Dawkins, Hollins, and Cheeks for the 76ers. For the Bucks, Marcus Johnson, Mickey Johnson, Bob Lanier, Quinn Buckner, and Sidney Moncrief. The officials, Daryl Garretson and Wally Rooney. The alternate is Bob Rakel. Lanier jumping center. With Caldwell Jones at the tip is controlled by the Bucks, an excellent road team, and riding it for the layup, which is missed, but Marcus Johnson gets the rebound goal. 
Now the Bucks jump out to a quick 2 0 lead. Maurice Cheeks throws it away. Bucks ball out of bounds. Now the Bucks clinched their division title, Dick, a month ago today, so they really haven't been under any pressure. It'll be interesting to see how they attack early. Uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of coaches don't like the layoff. Uh, Coach Nelson's been working this team very hard this week, however. Quinn Buckner underneath the Lanier. Three second violation. The free throws camped under the basket that time. Philadelphia 37 and 4 at home this year. The Milwaukee Bucks won their division by 15 whopping games. It's had an excellent year. And again, it's the 76ers who throw it away. They're the team that, yeah, they're the team that looks a little tight yeah. uh, to start this ball game. Here's a look from our high overhead camera as Quinn Buckner brings it down. Marcus Johnson, you're going to see Johnson and Irving one on one most of the afternoon. That should be a great matchup. Bucks almost lose it. Lanier with the left handed hook, it goes. Caldwell Jones picks up the foul. And big Bob Lanier. Many say he's the key to their playoff success. Uh, he's, he's a big guy and he has that great uh, touch if he gets started early and, and can score inside like that uh, uh, they're going to be uh, hard to handle he's got the bad knees and they've been resting him playing him gingerly coming down the stretch after they clinch it Dawkins loses it Buckner took it away Hollins gets it back Caldwell Jones with the basket Foul called underneath. Marcus Johnson picks up his first personal foul. First team foul against the Milwaukee Bucks, who lead it 5 0 here in the early going. Jones on the line, operating with a bad ankle. Well, it won't be a shutout. <laughs> he, of course, is their leading rebounder. Interesting, Milwaukee beat Philadelphia three out of five, the only team to own a season edge over the 76ers, and Milwaukee out-rebounded Philadelphia in all five of those games. Five to two bucks in the early going. Mickey Johnson on the outside. Here's Moncrief. 76ers with Lionel Hollins leading the way. Nice soft jumper. That's what uh, Philadelphia will try to do. They'll try to establish their running game early. Five to four lead for the Bucks. Lanier's come out of the post. Mickey Johnson, one time Chicago Bull. Shot rejected by Dawkins. You had Johnson at Chicago, didn't you? He was a rookie for us, yes. Uh, he was a third round draft choice. Really a, a Cinderella story on this guy. He's done a fine job for the Bucks this year, filling the role vacated by Dave Myers when he retired. Another rejection, this one by Caldwell Jones. Shot clock's going down. Down to one second. He did not get it away. Shot clock ran out. That's one thing that drives you nuts when you're coaching, Frank, is to not to get a shot off in uh, regulation time. One thing you don't want to do is get that crowd worked up, do you, when you're a visitor? Especially here, when Dr. J gets a stuff shot, it's uh, dangerous. You used to call a timeout. Jakes in the offense. Had a great night defensively against Indiana. Nice pass off to Hollins, having trouble controlling it. Moncrief knocked it out of his hands and out of bounds. Beautiful reaction. Sidney Moncrief, outstanding second-year man from Arkansas, and one of the great leapers in the NBA. Eight, five. Driving around his man, Marcus Johnson, and Collins collects the goal. There's one interesting uh, matchup here that surprised me a little bit. Uh, Daryl Dawkins is not guarding Lanier. Hot creep on the outside to Marcus Johnson. 76ers leading for the first time, 6-5. The shot block. That's three blocks by the 76ers early. Three on one fast break, and Dawkins throw it away. You don't see that very often for 76ers. They're, they're one of the better teams at converting that uh, numbers game. Here's the defense. 
There's some awesome jumping in this game. Dawkins leading the fast break. He's normally not the guy you'd want out in front of that fast break. Quinn Buckner, tip in, good by Marcus Johnson, and a foul called underneath. Many people believe that uh, Marcus and uh, Julius are the two best all-around players in the game. Uh, if they aren't, uh, you have to go a long way to find uh, some people that are better, and this will be a, a classic matchup throughout the series. They're working one-on-one. -on -one. Rebound to Mickey Johnson. Stolen. Bucks get it right back as Cheeks loses it. Buckner with the long lead pass to Moncrief on the drive. Great shot. What a move. Beautiful, beautiful. Almost like an acrobat in the air. The ballet or whatever you'd like to call that. That is a levitation specialist. Sidney Moncrief of the Milwaukee Bucks hanging in the air forever. Bucks leading 9-6. Dr. J, who hasn't seen much of the ball, Cheeks driving the lane, dumps it off to Caldwell Jones. Offensive foul. I agree with that call. He put his hand out ahead of time to protect it, ward the, ward the man off. That's the first time Dick Mata has ever agreed with an official. I, I, I did it one other time, Frank. I can't remember, but I know I've had one other agreement. <laughs> of course, you led the league in technicals this year. <laughs> we led the league in losses also. That's true. Bucks lose it. Johnson lost it. Cheeks on the drive. I wonder if they've ever called a technical on a television analyst. <laughs> I hope they don't. These officials got to be wondering, hearing your voice over here occasionally. I told them at last I get the final word. Talking about six men, Junior Bridgman has come into the game for the Milwaukee Bucks. Brought him in a little bit early too, didn't they? Yeah, that's a little earlier than usual. The pace of this game is fast, and I think that bench is going to play a more significant part today. Maurice Cheeks. Makes it a 9-8 Milwaukee lead. Eight minutes, 15 seconds left in the opening period here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Game one of the Eastern Conference semifinals. Buckner off the glass for two. He's really developed his game in the last couple of years of being an offensive threat. Great team leader. A real winner. He's increased his scoring average. Five points. Steal by Junior Bridgman. Hollins gets it back for Philadelphia. Dr. J. Finish, finish Dr. J. Tried for the steal, paid the price. Milwaukee down quickly. Lanier with the left-handed hook, knocked out of bounds underneath. It's Milwaukee's ball. College. There's the steal for the stop. Has great control of the basketball in his body. Bobby Jones has checked in for the 76ers, so both of the six men that we talked about earlier are in the game. This is tough for the referees right here. They get all that humanity piled up in one. Now watch the shove and the push and they'll go on here. Marcus Johnson to inbound. Alley-oop to Bridgman. It goes, and he's fouled. By Junior, Bridgman. A personal foul on Junior, Junior Bridgman gets his first basket. He's averaged 16.8. Not Talk bad for a guy coming off the bench. Talked to Coach Nelson earlier in the game uh, the, the day, and he said that they had been working very hard on their defense, and it seems to show in this first few minutes. Bridgman with the three-point play makes it 14 to 10 bucks. Rebounded by Moncrief, down to Buckner it comes. For Lanier to catch up. Underneath to Marcus Johnson, hook shot. It's third bucket. Bucks up by six. Seven minutes, 11 seconds. Left to play in the opening period. Cheeks and Buckner one on one. That's another interesting matchup. Here's Dr. J trying to make a move. Bobby Jones with the left handed shot. Bridgman skying for the rebound. Marcus Johnson missing from outside. Jones, the cheeks, back to Jones. Two points. Presentation, that delivery. Jones gets his first basket, and the Bucks come back quickly. 
Lanier from the top of the circle. Big guy has a fantastic touch out there. Well, for his size, you don't see somebody shoot from that distance with the, the accuracy that he does. Bucks have been ahead most of the way here in the opening period. Dawkins. Air ball. Irving saves it to Bridgman. Lanier with the fake driving on Dawkins. Dawkins fouled him. There's an interesting crossover here, uh, Frank. Uh, they've got Bobby Jones guarding uh, Marcus Johnson, and Marcus Johnson's guarding Julius Irving. Here's that last play. Lanier being fouled by Daryl Dawkins, and he'll be on the free throw line when we come back in just a moment. Bucks leading the 76ers 18 to 12, and Dick Mott, I'm a little surprised at this hot tempo. It's really, it's really fast. They're, they're going at it uh, uh, tooth and nail. It's, it's going to be a great series. This is two fine basketball teams. Lanier will be on the free throw line. Tony has uh, come into the game for Philadelphia. Good shooter. He, he's had a, a fantastic uh, freshman year, rookie year. He's in for Maurice Cheeks at this point. Been 11 turnovers in the game so far. Six by Philadelphia, five by Milwaukee. And Milwaukee has dominated the offensive boards. Lanier has seven points in the early going. 20 to 12. Milwaukee with its biggest lead in the opening period. Still six minutes remaining. Andrew Tony from Southwest Louisiana, Dwight Lamar School. He's the eighth man picked in the draft. Caldwell Jones. Off to Tony. Shot clock down to four. Good defense foul on Moncrief. Uh, uh, he's the baseline. is doing his job. The, the uh, help came to seal off, but uh, Daryl called a foul on it under the initiation of the drive. First foul on Moncrief. Thirteen foul on Milwaukee. Philadelphia with four. Irving missing the shot. Scrap for the rebound. Lanier tips it to Buckner. Quinn Buckner, University of Indiana. All Big Ten football star as well as a basketball star. One of the great athletes to ever come out of the state of Illinois. Marcus Johnson. Bridgman takes the shot from outside and hits. On the his back, too. Uh, they, they do that a lot of times, see if they can uh, con the referee into calling something for them. Foul is Johnson. That's his second. Tony on the outside. Other Eastern Conference semifinal playoff game. Going out in Boston between the Celtics and the Bulls. Richmond picks up his first personal foul. Mickey Johnson for Marcus Johnson. For the box, Bobby Jones on the line. Bobby Jones shooting the penalty shot. 76ers playing catch up, trailing 22 to 13. Teams seem to be in good control now. That there's not any uh, panic on Philadelphia's part, that's for sure. Just under five minutes left to play in the opening period. 22 to 14. Bucks lead it. Lanier on the outside. Shot clock is down to 10 right now. Bridgman takes it over Jones. Nice soft jumper. That's something that he's developed over the last few years. He'll continue to shoot that if they give it to him now that he has the hot hand. Seven points for Bridgman here in the first period. Andrew Tony. Moncrief working on him. Tony misses. Caldwell Jones with the rebound. Can't get it. Second time down. Stayed with that thing well. Seven feet tall and using that height to good advantage. Again, Bridgman, as you said, they give him that shot. He's going to throw it up there all day. Now, a good leader, and uh, Quinn Buckner certainly is. He'll find that guy. We get Bobby Jones quickly dropping it off to Hollins on the drive. Big move last year when the 76ers uh, picked up Hollins. The injury problems to Doug Collins at all. He's really been a lifesaver. Buckner from the corner. 
a player with a lot of confidence. Buckner's second basket. 28-18. Bucks leading it. Jones with the open shot from 18. Milwaukee bringing it down quickly. Lanier with the move. The fans wanted the traveling call. Lanier missing the hook shot. Foul called on Mickey Johnson. As he fouled Caldwell Jones. Feller drove in, changed hands. Left hand, if he took it with the right hand. On the rebound. You think he traveled there? Well, he is, I don't think so. I think he established a pivot foot. Uh, foul in the backcourt drives you crazy when you're coaching. There's John Killalay, the assistant to Don Nelson. He's been rumored, among others, for that uh, Atlanta job. The brain trust One now. Pull out there over there together. The last trip down the floor, uh, Bob indicated over the bench that he was tired, and uh, uh, Ketchins is in now in his place. Caldwell Jones on the free throw line for the Philadelphia 76ers. He's now three out of three from the line. Twenty-eight, twenty-two. 76ers will have advantage of the penalty the rest of the way. Three minutes and 20 seconds left in the opening period. Six-point Milwaukee advantage. Harvey Catchings, primarily a shot blocker, defensive player. Marcus Johnson trying to move inside, or rather Moncrief. Here they go. Irving. Doctor gets his second basket. Four-point game. And Mickey Johnson hands the crowd crowd down. We have a They are flying up and down the court. Dr. J roamed over and he made that block and then got the fast break out of the thing. Six-point lead for the Milwaukee Bucks. And we'll be back at the Spectrum in Philadelphia in just a moment. Mickey Johnson with a chance to complete the three-point play for the Milwaukee Bucks, who lead 30 to 24. That's a great uh, uh, play for Mickey because he came right back and answered the doctor's uh, stuff at one end. Established their tempo also. Johnson has shown he's a fine playoff performer. A couple of years ago with the Bulls, he averaged better than 27 points per game in a miniseries. Bobby Jones. He'll hit the open shots. 31-26. Well, the pace on this game is something to see. They're flying back and down the court. Air ball put up there by Mickey Johnson. Scrap for the rebound. Johnson gets the rebound, gets it again. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's a tough call right there. They called him for traveling as he came down with the ball. Mickey shot. He stayed with it. Went after the thing. There, there was a contact there. You call anything you wanted, I guess. Back to live action now. 76ers on the other end of the court. Dr. J underneath the Dawkins. Mickey oh, Johnson in a wrestling match there. And they got Johnson to the foul. That's three on Mickey Johnson. The penalty situation for the 76ers with 2.07 left in the opening period. Big decision now, rather to, to get the guy out of there and, and save him for the second half. Dawkins, just 25 years old. Of course, he came out of high school. Had he come out of college, this would be just his second year in the league. But he's a man that has, as they still say, potential written all over him. He's never quite realized that. He's caught the ball inside one time uh, today, and I'm, I'm sure that from a coaching standpoint, they'd like him inside a lot. Quinn Buckner trying to get around Tony. Drops it underneath. Mickey Johnson went up for the shot. And we get an elbow foul called on Dawkins. That's three on Darrell. 
I think he's operating at a handicap this year because uh, they won't let him wear his jewelry. <laughs> he, he might be out of balance, but you know, he, he, he's probably a little taller. His jewelry was really heavy. Steve Mix in the game. Now, he's what you call a banger, isn't he? I, I like this guy. Uh, uh, I've always liked kind of rough basketball, and uh, uh, Steve won't back down from anyone. He'll, he'll go after it. Uh, he's, he's interesting to watch. Well, if he and Catchings go one-on-one, -on -one and they're both in the game right now, it could look like a football game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he'll take a shot pretty soon outside. If he hits one, he'll take another one. He, he'll go after it. Cliff Richardson has checked into the game for the Philadelphia 76ers. Well, Catchings is going to come out. Mickey Johnson with three to make two. 76ers have uh, their total benches in. Not, not one of the starters out on the floor at this present time. One more. Penalty shot upcoming. Four-point lead for the Bucks. 32 to 28. Boston leading Chicago at the end of the first period, 32 to 23. Five point difference here, the Bucks in front of the Philadelphia 76ers. Doesn't look like the uh, layoff has hurt him at all. The week's rest. And some question as to whether or not, you know, you get take a week off is really cutting it to the 76 If it helps you, it hurts you. Well, it, they seem to pass the test, uh, and uh, they're, they're playing very loose. This is the first guard substitution uh, for Milwaukee in the game so far. Swing it. Swing it over Buckner Andrew. comes out. Andrew. Andrew Tony, excellent shooter, and Moncrief trying to stay with him. Tony gets his first bucket. Three-point lead for Milwaukee. Lanier. Brian Winters, who was a starter. Bill Moncrief did such a great job. Bridgman is knocked down as he puts the shot up. Foul by Tony. Bridgman four for four from the field. Total of nine points. I don't like to see players jump at a guy that's shooting a, a jump shot. Uh, you usually get in trouble. That time uh, the rookie fouled a, a guy that missed a shot. And they go back up and now get a chance to, to gain uh, everything that the defense had allowed them to lose. Penalty in effect for both sides for the remainder of the first period. Junior Bridgman. First player in double figures has 10. They'll probably come with the zone trap now. The zone trap, you can't play a zone in, in, the, in the back door. You can. You can play it if you don't call it a zone. <laughs> <laughs> no, they call it off. 35 to 30. Bucks. Tony jump shooting over Moncrief, and Moncrief grabs the rebound. Sidney Moncrief fouled as he puts up the 10-footer by Tony. Took it right to him. He wasn't going to back down from him. He just went right at the young kid. So again, three to make two. This time for Sidney Moncrief. 76ers this year equal the league record of 37 victories at home. Cheeks comes in. And Tony comes out. Moncrief with two points. This is his first free throw attempt. He's an 80% free throw shooter on the year. They're in the penalty, so that, that was just a practice shot. <laughs> 36 to 30. 59 seconds left in the opening period. Philadelphia can get two shots off now. They'll, they'll probably mess around a little bit and then take one and hope they can get the ball again for the last shot. A lot of great young talent on this Milwaukee team and Moncrief, of course, just in his second year. Number one draft choice a year ago. Bit of pressure by the Bucks as the 76ers bring it down. Sheiks into the corner. Ryan Winters staying with him. Richardson, bounce pass inside. Kiriton on the hook shot, doesn't go. Moncrief grabs the rebound. 35 they might seconds. Go early. They might go early with one. Again, Bridgman goes down. 
puts up the shot. No foul call this time. And Kierkegaard drives in for the stop. Oh, he knocked Winters almost up in the seats, and Winters may be hurt. Winters getting up very slowly. He asked for the 22nd timeout. Winters really took a blow as Kierkegaard went in for the slam. Kierkegaard was a rookie who uh, Cunningham was thinking about starting today if Caldwell Jones was unable to go because of the bad ankle. Take a look at it again. Look at Bridgman now. He takes a shot. Look at the bench get up and really get after him. Well, he's fallen three times. He's He's got one call out of it. I don't know, Brian, uh, that's a close call. That's a hard call. I'll tell you, it's hard to stand here. You see a guy 6'10 coming straight at you, and you uh, you have to, uh, at the moment of truth, it's sometimes you wish it was someone else. They'll go for one shot. Five-point lead for the Bucks, 37 to 32. Nine seconds. They don't want to take it too soon. He might go for the three-pointer. Winner with a three-point try. 76ers down quickly. Richardson, not in time. Bucket does not count. First period ended. Prior to the successful shot. And a frantic first period here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Both teams really moving up and down the court. Milwaukee 37, Philadelphia 32. Second quarter action in a moment. You saw Brian Winters of the Bucks involved in that collision a moment ago. We talked to Brian prior to the game. He was a starter. Now he's coming off the bench. Big adjustment. His shooting percentage did go down. Well, it was uh, tough adjusting to the bench. Uh, I think um, my shooting percentage probably dropped earlier in the year because I hurt uh, some nerves in my neck, and it took me about six weeks to get over that, and it was the, the right side of my shoulder and neck, so it was hard to get my right arm up. What do you see your role now as on this team? Well, I see my role as uh, coming off the bench, trying to get involved in the uh, offensive flow as quick as I can, uh, get some shots up, uh, give a little scoring, also uh, give a little leadership off the bench, uh, especially when I play with guys who don't play as, as many minutes as the starters. You know, I've had a little more experience in the league than some of the other guys coming off the bench, so I look upon that as my role. Second quarter about to get underway here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. 37 to 32. The Bucks over the Philadelphia 76ers as you look at these statistics in the first period of play. Maurice Cheeks on the outside. Winners staying with him. Bobby Jones cutting across. What a shot. Wow. He, looked, he looked like he launched that from a six shooter. Jones with 10 points. Bucks come right back. Bridgman missing. Puritan lost it out of bounds. It'll be Milwaukee's ball. Oh, oh, some great rough play underneath that bank board today. It's interesting they have catchings on there and at the same time. Pass into Bridgman. Deflected. Marcus Johnson stayed with it. That's the secret. How, how quick you can get up on that second jump. He jumped once to get it. Missed and was right back there. Time out called here by the Philadelphia 76ers in the early going. Box leading 39 to 34 as Billy Cunningham gathers his troops around him here in Philadelphia. Great heavyweight boxing action on CBS Sports Saturday. Greg Page and Marty Monroe. That's going to be a great one. And that's the debut of CBS Sports Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun. Puritan on the drive for the 76ers. Lays it in. Second basket for the rookie. And the Bucks lead is trimmed to three. Here's a steal. And Cheeks almost lost it. Winners knocked it out of bounds. And Cheeks is quick, isn't he? he, he he's a really good at stealing the ball. He was looking around for Dr. J. The doctor's over on the bench. He almost threw it to him. Here it is from high overhead as the 76ers throw it in. Cheeks. The mix. There's Mix and catchings. We talked about that one-on-one -on -one confrontation, which will get a little physical. And Mr. Catching trying to stop Mr. Mix with his knee. Well, uh, Steve put his head down. He had a point he wanted to get to, and I don't think anyone's going to deny him that. Kierden with the hook shot. Now called underneath. Loose ball foul, I believe, on catching. 
Oh, two quick ones for Harvey. There's so much action here, he could call it on anyone. Another substitution coming in, Pat Cummings for the Bucks. This is the one I want to watch between Mix and Cummings. There'll be some uh, activity there. Two quick team fouls against the Bucks here at the start of the second period. Mix trying to get rid of it. Cheeks from 20 feet. First basket for Maurice Cheeks. They went over to two time and they paid for it. They left the open man and he hit it. That makes it a one point game. Bucks 39, 76 ers 38. Catchings drops it off to Brooksman, take it away. Cheeks again with another steal. All the way, drops it off. Richardson, but make it go. Boy, there's some activity out there. Bridgman with the rebound, got it down to Winters. Deflected by the 76ers. That's three, three balls in the last four possessions that Cheeks has touched. It's like watching a tennis match. It is. Boy, this is a quick one. Marcus Johnson in the corner. And Bridgman has his pass deflected by Cheeks. There's four times touched the ball. Take a look at that sequence under the bucket a moment ago. It got a little wild. Cheeks with the steal. Coming all the way. And Richardson couldn't get the layup. There's a big wall there. <laughs> and Milwaukee came right back the other way. Back to live action. Buckner with a shot. And right off the bench, sometimes that's hard to do. You don't like to put a guy in that position very often where he's been cold and he's got to come in and produce. 41-38. Bucks have built the lead back to three. They've been ahead by as much as a dozen in the first period. Mix, fadeaway jumper. Got that grabs the his, rebound. One of his favorite spots. As you were commenting before the game about Milwaukee selecting the basket to our left. Here's Buckner hitting another long jumper. You think there's a factor in which bucket you select? I, I like to have the defense in front of me the first half of the ball game. You get your choice on the road, and I always do that. Dr. J underneath. Buckner tried to grab it out of his hands. He's very alert. He may have gotten part of his arm, but he, he was playing his defense properly. Three team fouls on the Bucks here in the second period. None on the 76ers. Of course, that would have been an easy two points otherwise. It's hard to tell on an arm movement like that. He could, he could have uh, gotten part of his arm or not. The referee had a better advantage point than we did. I've never heard you be so nice to officials. <laughs> never. <laughs> there are uh, natural predators. <laughs> Mix on the drive. Just penetrating as far as he can. Catching, swatted it away. Dr. J with the jumper. And Catchings with the next rebound. That's Catchings' strong point. He blocked the shot and he got a great rebound. Marcus Johnson trying to put a move on it. Julius Irving. Buckner over Cheeks. Deflected. Again, the 76ers turn it over. Brian Winters with a 14-footer. Smart play. Did you notice he had the guy on his back? He looked around. He had a numbers game. He, he took the shot. He's got uh, one more rebounder than the 76ers. Really a smart play. He, he mentioned earlier that he's a veteran. He showed it on that, on that move. Cheeks showing five fingers, indicating the play that Billy Cunningham wants the 76ers to run here. Shot clock down to seven. Won't go. Catchings fighting for the rebound underneath. Marcus Johnson comes out of it. Winners. No traveling call. Hook shot by Quinn Buckner has been hot. Richardson. That's a fumble. It draws attention to people a lot, but it's a proper call. Or non-call, I should say. Jones is fouled as he goes in for the shot. Buckner picks up his second personal foul. Caldwell Jones will go to the free throw line. We've talked about the benches and the importance of it. They're about pretty even as far as scoring goes. Sure is. I think that uh, uh, Cunningham went to his bench a little earlier than uh, Nelson did, and uh, it's probably the difference in the uh, statistic. Jones is four out of four from the free throw line. Keeps it perfect. 76ers had it down to one. And the Bucks moved up again by seven. 45-39 is where it stands right now. It's a unique overhead shot. 
this is a great scouting shot. If you were watching the game, you can see the pattern develop. Eight points for Jones, six from the free throw line. Quinn Buckner. Ryan Winters from South Carolina. Catchings. Shot clock down to ten. Winters will take that. Nothing but the bottom of the net, as they say. That's a shooter. That guy's a born shooter. That's uh, Boston's old number one play. Cheeks. Gets a pick. Drives underneath. Knocked out of bounds. 76ers ball. Number 22, Andrew Tony. Tony coming back into the game for the 76ers. Andrew Tony, their number one draft choice. Eighth player selected in the draft last year. 47 to 40. Bucks. 729 left in the half. Tony. The Cheeks. Open shot from 20. Was he saw his partner Brian Winters in a little trouble off that screen. He left the area. Tony spotted him. He buried it. Cheeks with a foul there, and you hate to see that type of foul just to reach it in. Oh, they drive you nuts when you're coaching. I, I tell you that there's no reason for that. He should just give ground with the guy and let him go. And you get a little over anxious. It's the first team foul against the 76ers here in the second quarter. Buckner holding it on the outside. QB might stand for quarterback as well as Quinn Buckner. 76ers with the steal and Caldwell Jones throws it away. Trying to get it to Tony on the break. It's a high percentage pass. Possess nothing can happen to you bad if you've got the ball. Timeout called with six minutes and 58 seconds left to play in the first half and the Bucks leading the 76ers 47-42. NBA playoff action on CBS this week. A lot of it. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday night. We're going to stay up late, I guess, this week, aren't we? Yes, if you like basketball, <laughs> and I do. I, I, I try to conserve my energy in the daytime so I can watch at night. Bucks with the basketball, leading by five. Quinn Buckner trying to get it inside to Marcus Johnson, and Irving was holding Johnson. There are those who say the officials favor the superstars, like Irving and their foul calls. As a coach, what do you think? Well, I, I think that subconsciously uh, the name players do get a break now and then. Uh, I think it's a, a matter of a pattern that they set early uh, throughout their career, and the great players are able to do things, and the referees know what they can do, and a lot of times they anticipate. In a sense, the, uh, the referees are fans too, right? I, th I think they get caught up into this thing like the rest of us. Buckner. To Pat Cummings. Bobby Jones on the block. Irving comes down with it. And a foul. Called on catchings. That might be a good foul because that stuff may have brought this crowd alive down here because Bobby Jones is in his end of the court alone. It's three on catchings. Cummings uh, shot actually blocked on him by Jones there. Harvey's having a tough time staying out of the way. That, that's one of these, uh, you're, you're in the uh, right place at the wrong time, and you can't avoid that contact. Big Bob Lanier, who has played sparingly, back into the game for the Milwaukee Bucks. This may force him into more minutes than uh, Coach Nelson wants to use him because of the foul trouble of catching. You know, Bob's had a great career, but he's never played in a championship team, has he? Well, there aren't very many players that have, but he has, and he has a, a great deal of talent. Uh, I'm sure that the big fellow would like to finish uh, in one championship series before he gets out of this league. Nor has Irving in the NBA. He did in the ABA. And the 76ers have been to the finals a couple of times, but they've never won it. Well, he's been to the well uh, a number of times, and uh, he just hasn't drawn the water yet. Irving with six points. 47 to 44. That's the time left in the first half. A little bit of pressure put on by the 76ers. Big edge of the offensive rebounds to the Milwaukee Bucks as Marcus Johnson answers with his fifth basket. Milwaukee has eight offensive boards leading to nine points. Philadelphia three leading to two points. That's and that's significant. A, that's a significant uh, statistics, uh, a seven-point differential. Looking over Don Nelson's shoulder there from behind the Milwaukee bench. Nice pass to Dr. J underneath. They isolated him a little and there was no weak side help and the man didn't know it and he fronted him on a perfect lob pass. 
Bucks by three. Johnson. Oh, look at Marcus Johnson. You've got to make Dr. J play defense, and uh, Milwaukee's doing a really good job of that so far. Well, that's the hole in his game, isn't it? Well, if, if he had one, uh, I would say that. Now, he makes a lot of steals, but if you post him, bring him down close, you've got a chance to score over him. Matt Cummings on the foul. That's his first. And benefiting from the penalty here for the rest of the first half, which has 5.51 left to play. Now, the Bucks have five fouls on them. Philadelphia just has two. Uh, that, that, uh, that means a lot down to this last uh, five minutes uh, when one team is in the penalty and the other isn't. Jones is three out of three from the line. 11 points in the afternoon. Either one, whoever breaks the point. Fifty-one. Forty-eight. Bucks by three. They've been up by twelve. Philadelphia narrowed it to one, but the 76ers haven't been ahead since early in the game. They tried to lob it underneath to Lemire. And a foul call on Caldwell Jones, who put an elbow into the ribs of Lemire. That's three fouls on Jones. Curitan, number 25, comes back in. Jones comes out. Jones doesn't seem to be hobbled much, does he, by that day? I've been watching his movement, and he, he's not limping at all on the, on the natural walk back to the bench. And he, he hasn't uh, seemed to, uh, to be in, in any discomfort. They were saying as late as yesterday that he was doubtful. Take a look at it on replay. A little lob pass from Johnson underneath. Lanier going for it. He took a shot from behind. Caldwell. Yes, yeah, that was a, that was a good call. Boy, they're, they're doing better than, in this game than they do in mine, Houston. <laughs> Don Nelson, the head coach of the Bucs, and Billy Cunningham, you know, talking about six men as we were earlier. Here's one of the better six men when he was a player. Well, the year that uh, uh, Philadelphia won that championship, he uh, uh, came off the bench and did a great job for them. Close to halftime in that Chicago-Boston game, and it's all knotted at 50. Mass underneath. Jones comes up with it. Down to Maurice Cheeks. Probably should have taken the shot there. Mark Creep was all over that when he played that very well. Foul called on Buckner. That's three on Buckner from overhead. I like this angle. You, you can see the flow develop. You can see who's there to play defense. You can see the trailers coming into it and the, and the people on defense. A little over anxious. It was kind of a loose ball and you commit to it and you have a hard time backing off. And here's the advantage of being in the penalty or having your opponent in the penalty. These are, these are free points. He made the first shot of the penalty. Brian Winters comes back into the game for the Milwaukee Bucks. And Sheeks collects two free throws. And we're down to a one-point game again. Bucks 51. 76ers 50. Five and a half minutes left in the first half. Moncrief trying to get it across the center line. Throws it away. The pressure worked. Tried to get it to Bridgman in the corner, and Brian Winters threw it over his head. Philadelphia did a good job of sealing the middle. They wanted to go to Marcus Johnson up on the high post, run your back door, your triangle, but they sealed that off and did an effective job. Here's the 76ers with a chance to take the lead for the first time since early in the game. On, Tony. To Bobby Jones, nine seconds on the shot clock. Tony from deep in the corner. Marcus Johnson really skied to get that rebound. I thought he was on a ladder. Oh, Richmond shot blocked by Jones. Bobby said, don't bring that stuff in here. Tony. 76ers lead. Okay, Coach Nelson called a timeout. They did it. That's, that's, a, that's a great thing. Now watch this crowd here. They love to watch the doctor and company get into this running game. you got to stop it. Brown is on their feet, applauding the Philadelphia 76ers. They've come back now from 12 down to move ahead, 52-51. Take a look at Bobby Jones on defense for Philadelphia. He's had a day so far. Yeah, he said, I'll capture this one. He got it with both hands and started the fast break, and this is what Philadelphia likes to do. And here's the trap again. Crowd is really fired up as we go back to action. Bucks down quickly. Lanier gets an easy two. Lanier. 
beat the trap every time, but you can't uh, simulate the, the pressures and the emotion of it. A lot of times players will get excited and pass or dribble into congested areas. Lob pass to Jones. Bridgman almost took it away. Tony trying to drop it off to Jones. Moncrief. Good fill in defense. Waiting for help. Lost it. Dr. J. Three on one break. Cheeks back to Dr. J. It's amazing how they look for him. He had a layup. Didn't want to take it. Rather, rather see the big guy get that going. Ten points now for Irving. Philadelphia has 12 block shots to Milwaukee's three. They go inside to Ladeer and he's fouled. Take a look at that last sequence from that uh, overhead camera. I like, like I say, I like this angle. You can watch him coming down. He kicks it off. He could have gone in for it, maybe drawn a foul, but passes it off. Very unselfish. And it's more fun to watch the doctor do it than anyone in the league. So, you know, I'm sure, sure the Cheeks was uh, very well aware of that. You know, you may like that angle, but how would you like to be the cameraman up there? No way, no way. <laughs> Bucks with the ball. Lanier. Faked it twice, shooting over Curative. Oh, that touch. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of times people yeah. like to see Lanier in closer would use that big body. 11 for Lanier. Going back and forth now. Bucks leading by one, 55-54. 3.20 left in the first half. Irving from the corner. Touched last by Bridgman. It'll be 76ers ball. That's one of the Doc's favorite places over on this right-hand side of the court. And clear it out and let him drive one-on-one. -on -one. If you let him have the baseline, you're in trouble. Jake's got a pick. Didn't take advantage of it to take the shot. Go, Andrew! Five! Jones looking for someone to break across the middle. Finally goes to Irving, moving That's on Lanier. Like a volleyball game for a minute. Dr. Wanda put it. Little finger roll by Julius Irving. Gives him 12 points. And the 76ers are up by one. Bobby Jones reaching over Marcus Johnson. Both teams are in a penalty now. Wild and furious action out at the other end as they batted around and Irving winds up with the ball. You know, he has huge hands. That's the amazing thing about Irving. Well, a lot of young people try to imitate him and they get in trouble doing it. Uh, he, he has a gift that uh, not, not many of us have. and that he, has, he has the ability to control the ball with one hand and it, the finger roll. But it's, it's, it's really uh, unfortunate that a lot of the young kids try to, try to copy him. Marcus Johnson, this is his first trip to the free throw line. And he has 14 points here in the first half. And the Bucks grab the lead back 57-56. They say measuring Doc's hand 11 inches with his fingers slightly open. That's his, his wing spread. What is it when they're more than slightly open? Tony. Six points for the rookie. 58-57, 76ers, Marcus Johnson, short. Mockreef there to save it. Nice little ball fake, and he got the whole team in the air. 59-58, Milwaukee. Two minutes, six seconds. Nice late dunk over here now. They'll try to force him baseline, trap him off. Shot clock down to five as Cheek starts the baseline drive. Kierton can't get it to fall, and Moncrief comes up with the rebound. There are many guards that cannot rebound. Great drive oh, by Junior Bridgman. Took it all the way and nearly ripped the bottom out of the basket. 61-58. What a move. A lot of people can stuff, but there aren't very many people that can do it in traffic. Right in your face. Bridgman, 6'5". That's one of Dawkins' stuff, isn't it? In your face? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Marcus Johnson with the steal, and Bobby Jones hustling to get it back. Finally knocked out of bounds. It's the 76ers. Now, well, let's see. They're going to call a foul, I think. I think they call it over on the other side on Sydney. Moncrief gets the foul. Look at it from overhead. Look at the hustle here by Jones. Hey, listen, Jones better hustle. He threw the ball away down at this end, and he, and he said, I better get me a basketball back. And you saw, after it. You yeah. saw the shove there yeah, by Moncrief. Good 
call by the official. Second foul on Moncrief. Halftime feature, a tribute to one of your former players, Wesley Unsell. That should be a treat. Well, he retired this year, and that's, that's a great guy. And our rebound feature is about the Philadelphia 76ers of 1966 and 67, voted by many as the greatest NBA team of all time. Holland's back into the game. Andrew Tony on the free throw line has seven points. 61-59, Bucks. He can trim it to one here. 76 is going with a smaller outfit now. I guess uh, Steve Mix will play the center spot. They'll come with the trap, the zona. Just a minute 20 left to play in the first half. Ryan Winters controls for Milwaukee. Marcus Johnson, shot clock to 10. Inside the Moncrief. Gets his own rebound. Moncrief, who can really leap, misses it again. And Mix with the next rebound. Doesn't miss very many down there. He earned that one. 76ers can take the lead. Tony on the drive. Charging foul. Well, Brian paid for it a little earlier. This time he got one. Tony's third personal foul. And Winters takes a hard ride to the deck for the second time in this game. He's come in. You can see him starting to get back to set himself. Got any questions about is. that call? No, nope, no. Nope. He fouled two guys. <laughs> <laughs> he made it easy for the official. Yes. Bridgman. Yeah. Off the front rim. Here they come. Hollins. Three on two break. Hollins takes it all away. Irving with the tip in. Left handed tip in by Julius Irving. Philadelphia will get two shots. That one and one more. 25 seconds left in the half. 76ers leading by one. 62-61. Here it comes. Irving with the steal. Look out. That's 16 points for Irving and a three-point 76er lead, their biggest of the game. We're down to five seconds left to play in the half. I was wrong. They're going to get three shots. <laughs> Winners. Foul by Cheeks. Bring in a shooter in. Tony's coming in now. They'll push it up, try to get it to the shooter. A lot of times, here's a good opportunity to get your three-point shot. If you have much to lose, and if you got a good shooter and he's in range, he's in rhythm, we tell our guys, let him go with that three-pointer once in a while. One of the better free-throw shooters in the league, Brian Winters, who has not made a trip to the line this afternoon. 76 is leading by three here. He can narrow it to one. If he makes these next two free throws, that's the situation. He has averaged under 12 points per game this season. Oh, that doesn't happen very often. Brian Winters missing two free throws. That's a four-point turnaround. And a foul called on Winters. He was not fouled in the act of shooting. I said he was going to get three to make two, but that wasn't the case. The second shot was the penalty. That is a four-point turnaround. He, he misses two, and now they come down to the other end with three seconds left on the clock in the half. Three to make two. You'd rather see them come down and earn it. It's, it's bad when they have to give it to him as a gift. Now, Milwaukee has led most of the way. And it's got to be a little discouraging. Don't forget after this game, the second game of our doubleheader, depending on where you happen to be, you'll see one of these games. Houston against Los Angeles. Game three or Kansas City, Portland. Game three of their miniseries. Cheeks missing the first free throw. He'd made four in a row prior to that. And one more. 65-61. 76ers. Milwaukee will welcome the uh, halftime rest. Quickly it goes. Bridgman trying to get the three-pointer away. He does. But we have a foul call. Number 25, 
Time is run out of the clock, but the foul was called prior to the expiration of time. Billy Cunningham a little disgusted about that as Bridgman will go to the line. That's a mis that's a bad mistake to make a foul net with one second left on the on the clock. It's better to let them try to take that long shot. Bucks bench looking on. Prior to heading to the dressing room. And Bridgman comes up with two big points for Milwaukee. That's Got to have happen. a little bit upset. I'm sure about that call. 66-63. That's the halftime count. Philadelphia 76ers leading the Bucks, and the Bucks got to regroup. Momentum now seems to be with the 76ers as they go to halftime after trailing most of the first half. A couple of interesting features coming up after this. Welcome back to the Spectrum in Philadelphia. We're at halftime with the Philadelphia 76ers leading the Milwaukee Bucks. I'm Frank Lieber along with uh, Dick Mata. And you would have to think the Bucks are going to do a little regrouping right now. They had a couple of foul problems. They had their main string on the bench at that last two minutes. And they paid for it. But they're in good shape. There aren't any serious foul problems. I think that the team will go right down to the wire on this ball game. It'll come down to some probably freak play to determine the winner. I think somebody just won a car in the background as a reason for all the, the noise. They're going through a free throw or a half-court shooting contest. Let me ask you a little bit about Wes Unsell. He played for you at Washington, one of the great rebounders in NBA history, uh, 1,000 games, 10,000 points. He has so many statistics that that's almost impossible to give him credit. But I think his main statistic that he's about six, seven and a half. In his whole career, he was playing against the Giants in this league. And you know that Wes, Wes is a winner. I, I guess if you could say anything else about a guy that, that you go down and put on your headstone that you're a winner, that wouldn't be too bad. He won a world championship and he played for three others. And there aren't very many centers in this league that will ever be able to say that. He averaged something like 14 rebounds over almost 1,000 games. And of course, is now retired. Here's a tribute to Wes Unseld from Gary Bender. Last Sunday, the Washington Bullets failed to make the playoffs for the first time in 13 years. And not so coincidentally, they paid tribute to a 13-year retiring legend named Wes Unsell. Since his rookie year in 1968, Unsell led the Bullets in a league dominated by seven-foot centers, while despite what the press releases said, he was barely six-foot seven. A three-time All-American from Louisville, he joined the original Baltimore Bullets in 1968 and became the only man other than Wilt Chamberlain to win Rookie of the Year and League MVP in the same season. Throughout a 13-year career, his greatest professional thrill was defeating the Seattle Supersonics for the 1978 World's Championship. There were times, I know that there were battles I would have with Willis Reed, uh, who was tremendously strong. And, but I, I don't think I was ever intimidated in that sense. And that, that's probably been the only good thing of, about the way I play the game is that uh, my attitude has always been that if you want to knock heads for 48 minutes, I was willing to do that. Biggie and I have had problems over the years, personality problems. He, you know, and I, and I, I would have to take 50% of that, that uh, things I did probably irked him and vice versa. But I will say this, that for years, no matter how, what we did or what we thought of each other inside this dressing room, when we stepped on the court, we played. And I can respect that. The only thing about Jabbar, I, I've always waited the, as many times as I've played him, you know, and he, he's always had a reputation of turning around, you know, if guys were pushing him and beating him. And I've always, he had this reputation that he would turn around and punch him. I've been waiting for 12 years to turn around and punch me. You never did it? No, not yet because I, I think I probably beat up on him as much as anybody. I, I found out a long time ago, if I don't give a lot of mental preparation to a game, then I'll stink out the joint because mm. I just never had the tools that some people have. So I, I'm always thinking of, of little ways to, to uh, keep a person off balance or trying to think of that person's weaknesses and, and work on them. And, you know, I don't care whether that weakness is physical or mental. I, you know, I work on those. And I, I've always had to give a lot of preparation, mental preparation, to play. Otherwise, I'll get wiped out. But I get paid to play. No, nobody, I, I've always had this feeling that no one is really interested in, 
you know, your little, you know, you're talking about guys making hundreds of thousands of dollars a, a year. I don't, I don't think people are interested in, you know, he's got a little pain. How many guys go to work every day in the steel mills, uh, you know, anywhere, who, who just don't want to go because they're hurt? You, you go because that's your job. One of the good things about my career is that I've been able to, to form a lot of good, lasting friendships and relations with a lot of people in this area. That's rare, when you, I, I think. And I would like to take this time and thank all those people uh, for their kindness, their warmness, some kind words, some criticism when I needed it. And uh, it's going to be tough to walk away. I'm getting ready to go do the, the toughest thing that I'm going to have to do, probably I ever will do. I'm going to go back in the dressing room and I'm going to take this uniform off, realizing for about at least over a thousand times that I put it on that I will never put it on again. But I have very few regrets in that sense. I'm going to miss all of you. God bless you and thank you very, very much. the spectrum in Philadelphia at halftime with the Philadelphia 76ers leading the Milwaukee Bucks 66 to 63 in game one of the Eastern Conference semifinal series. The NBA on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. rebound feature today will be especially interesting to you fans of the Philadelphia 76ers. It involves the 66-67 76ers voted as the greatest NBA team of all time. Old Spice presents... Rebound. Brought to you by Old Spice Stick Deodorant, the deodorant that works overtime. The 1966-67 edition of the Philadelphia 76ers was the most powerful ball club ever assembled. Wilt Chamberlain was the mainspring of the team as he terrorized the backboards and commanded the basket. In the backcourt, Hal Greer ran from buzzer to buzzer while Wally Jones moved the ball. Luke Jackson was a strong arm forward and Chet Walker loved to thump, bump and shake out a deadly jump shot. Billy Cunningham came off the bench to play with perilous abandon and the 76ers scored more total points than any team before or since. The leftover playing time was split among Larry Costello, Matt Bukas, Dave Gamby, and Bill Melchione. The coach was Alex Hannum, and Chamberlain was the league's MVP as the 76ers smashed through the playoffs. In the championship series, Philadelphia snatched an unbelievable 101 rebounds in a single ball game as they shoved aside the San Francisco Warriors and claimed the title. Years later, Hannum was fired, Chamberlain was traded, and the mighty Philadelphia dynasty was suddenly defunct. But for one bruising season, the 76ers were the greatest team in 35 years of NBA action. Both teams back in the court prior to the start of the second half. As you look at the first half statistics, Dick Mata, what jumps out at you? The uh, steals and the blocked shots, uh, a big plus in uh, 67. 66ers uh, favor and the uh, uh, field goal shooting is uh, also in their favor but Milwaukee's only three points down. Coming off the bench Bobby Jones has scored 12 and Junior Birchman has countered with 17. Let's take a look at the individual scoring now as we prepare to start the second half. First of all, with the Milwaukee Bucks, we mentioned Junior Bridgman uh, with 17 in the first half. That's incorrect. He had 15 points in the first half of play, but uh, that's a nice load coming off your bench. It sure is. He and Bobby Jones are living up to our pregame expectations. And as far as the 76ers are concerned, this is the way their points shape up. Irving got off to kind of a slow start, but he really got it in high gear in the second period. Julius with 16, Bobby Jones with 12 coming off the bench, and Cheeks also in double figures here at the Spectrum. Basketball Association. The NBA on CBS is sponsored by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Old Spice Stick Deodorant for 24-hour deodorant protection and the great Old Spice scent. And by Sears Tire and Auto Center, home of straight talk, good values, and satisfaction. Want to remind 
everybody at the conclusion of today's game at each of our NBA telecasts during the season will be selecting the Miller High Life most valuable player of the game in conjunction with this award Miller will present a check for one thousand dollars to the special Olympics organization in the name of the player selected Dick and I'll be voting for the MVP and today's winner will be announced at the end of the telecast now do you coaches pay much attention to those first half stats uh, to the fouls uh, and a little bit uh, we prod our players if we're being out rebounded uh, a lot of times statistics don't tell the true picture of the game but I look for statistics uh, for the rebound statistics I look for uh, something abnormal like steals or or block shots uh, and uh, try to caution the players uh, to take care of that particular part of the ball game Don Nelson the head coach of the Milwaukee Bucks five times a member of the world champion Boston Celtics great student of Red Auerbach talking about rebounds Milwaukee at 22 in the first half Philadelphia 19 Billy Cunningham getting his troops ready to send him back into action 66 63 Philadelphia in the lead right now after trailing most of the first half we should also point out that uh, despite the fact that Philadelphia did not win their division actually they tied with Boston Milwaukee did win the division, but Philadelphia has the home court advantage in this seven-game series, if it goes seven. Yes, the, the, home, uh, the home team advantage goes to the team with the best record after the uh, miniseries. The uh, division winners get the, the first bye. So if we go to seven games, game seven would be two weeks from today right here at the Spectrum, and a lot of people are expecting it to go seven. Teams with uh, two of the best three records in the league. 76ers controlling as we start the third period of play. Both teams going with their starting lineups. Cheeks can't get rid of the ball. Shot clock down to five seconds. Cheeks is going to have to hurry. Puts it up with two seconds. That hits it. Maurice Cheeks. He used all that shot clock. What a collision. After you're in the league a, a short time, you have an in, inbred clock in your brain, and you can just know when that 24-second clock's going off and get it up. Take a look at that collision. Moncrief going down for Milwaukee. And Cheeks for the 76ers. And Maurice is rubbing his right arm a little bit. Post up, post up. Cheeks picking up the foul. There's the bucket a moment ago. Back to live action. Mickey Johnson on the drive. Misses. 76ers. Three on one break. Irving dishes it off to Cheeks who rides in for two. Cheeks with two buckets to start in the second half. Philadelphia with its biggest lead in the afternoon. 70-63. Lanier answers. That's an important basket. This next two or three minutes coming out of the halftime is very crucial to both basketball teams. Cheeks guarded very closely by Quinn Buckner. Looking inside to the doctor. Can't go there. Goes to Dawkins instead who has not been a factor in this game. Hollins from outside. Lanier who takes up a lot of room grabbing that rebound. Weighs about 250 or so. Mickey Johnson. No good. Dawkins almost tipped that one in. Accidentally for the 76ers. Irving gets it down to Lionel Hollins. Caldwell Jones was loose, and, and Moncrief goes up and blocks the shot. Great defense by Moncrief. Thought the Ducks should have taken a shot on that one. Here's Moncrief on the drive. Stuffed by Marcus Johnson. Great athletic play. Marcus followed up the way he should. Didn't save any energy. Took on, on the anticipation there may be a miss. You've always got to think miss. 70-67. 76ers by three early in the third period. Doctor on the drive has it knocked out of his hands by Quinn Buckner. Great steal by Buckner. Off to Marcus Johnson. Riding it on Caldwell. Jones and hits the bucket. Marcus Johnson with two quick buckets. He's got 18 points in the 76ers. What a time. Can't let it get away from you now. So, one-point advantage now for the 76ers, who had led by seven just a moment ago in this fast-moving game here at the Spectrum. Here's one reason why Marcus Johnson is an all-star. Well, he, he saw that uh, Moncrief was in little trouble, and he made the full effort. Tell him not to be tired now. Just go after the thing. <laughs> you can be tired this summer. One-point game. 76ers leading 70-69. Cheeks on the outside. Hollins on the open shot. Mickey Johnson trying to rush him a little bit. Tipped up and in. I don't know who got that one. The big Doc had his hand on that. Marcus Johnson back down quickly. He has 18 points. Leading score in the game. 
Jenkins, made away jumper. And go Irving with the rebound. Takes it away from Mickey Johnson. Climbed right over Mickey on that one. Cheeks to Hollins. Bobby Jones. You don't like him to be open. A bucket by Dawkins on the tip in a moment ago was his first basket of the game. 74-69. 76ers have it built up to a five-point advantage. They've been up by seven. 8.55 left in the third period. Nice fake by Mickey Johnson. Bobby Jones intimidated him underneath. I thought Mickey got fouled on that movement there. He had the guy in the air and he committed the defense. Came down and I thought he scraped him. Ball lost out of bounds by the Bucks. In that other Eastern Conference semifinal game, tight one. Boy, Chicago's really playing. They, they're really coming on man. I talked to Jerry just the other day, and he's excited about his ball club. Turnover. Lanier trying to get it down to Buckner. There were two turnovers. I thought he thought Buckner was a wide receiver there, trying to run under that thing. Isn't Buckner a defensive back? He was at Indiana. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He, he's not used to catching them. Now the Bulls had won what now? Ten in a row going into that game. I think so. They're, like I said, they're very excited about their ball club. I'm, I'm happy for Jerry, of course. Tight one here, 74-69, 76ers in the lead. Swatted away by Johnson, but Cheeks got it back. Here's Dawkins. His pass is tipped away. Moncrief. He can go up. Oh, boy. Bobby Jones really wiped him out and then helped him up, <laughs> which is the gentlemanly thing to do. Moncrief was way above the hoop. Boy, he gets high. <laughs> He's a guard, too. Isn't it? It's amazing. Bobby said, no, no, thanks. We're not going to let you have that that easy. you got to earn him at the free throw line. Moncrief has three blocked shots and six rebounds, which is not bad for a guard. <laughs> there's, a, there's a great athletic play. I, uh, it, it's amazing we don't have more injuries in our league, the way these guys go at each other. Sidney Moncrief. He got it. Here it is on the replay. Watch how high he gets. I mean, he's way up there. And Jones really ducks him. <laughs> and then he said, excuse me, as he picked him up. You almost need an ink blotter sometimes to get these guys off the floor. Moncrief converting on both free throws, 74-71, 76ers. Here's Cheeks breaking through two men. I know Hollins. Milwaukee's in their zone. Dawkins. That's the way to beat his own. <laughs> What, what, what did you see there that made it his own? Uh, they were playing his own. They were just playing his <laughs> own, right? No, they were trying to disguise it. Get Our rules are a little different than uh, uh, they were well within the framework of the rules, but it's his own defense. Marcus Johnson on the drive up the middle, tries to left hand it into the hoop, and Irving. That's a major league rebound. <laughs> Is it ever? That's Mickey. He's still down at the other end trying to get up. Collins missing. Moncrief grabs it. The pace of this game has not let up. It's been furious from the start. Great behind the back pass from Quinn Buckner to Mickey Johnson, who gets the two points and is fouled. There's a hit. Again from overhead. Here they come now. What's his pass by Buckner behind the back? Left hand behind the back. Mickey Johnson's not going to run. But Mickey finally got his three point attempt. He stayed down at the end, and uh, Mick has a problem sometimes. He, he, he thought he got picked on, he stayed there, and he should have gotten up and hustled back. And uh, it was very interesting. Buckner went to him and told him, come on, this is a playoff game. You, you can't let your emotions get involved in this thing. Get back and help us. Doesn't get the three-pointer, but the rebound to Buckner. Left hands it into the hoop. Quite a quiet play. Buckner does so many little things for his team that people don't notice. Bucks trail by just one. Seven minutes, 15 seconds. Left in the third period. Dawkins inside. Trying to move on Lanier. And not get it to go down. Bucks try to save it and do. Pass down court quickly to Marcus Johnson. Sidney Moncrief with the great save a moment ago from Milwaukee. Here's Lanier on the drive. Off to Buckner with the open shot. Rebound, Marcus Johnson has it blocked on him by Irving. He goes up again, and this time he is knocked on the arms by Dawkins. I don't know if these backboards can take it. That one's still rattling up there. <laughs> Four fouls on Dawkins. Look at it again. 
nice fake by Johnson. Irving swats it away. Yeah, he got him on the arm. They, they could have called three fouls earlier than that. Time out. Philadelphia with the 76ers leading the Bucks by one. 76-75. Seventy Sixers by one. Keep in mind the Milwaukee Bucks, one of the best row teams in the league. This year, 126 and lost only 15 on the road. It's the 76ers weren't bad either. They were 25 and 16 on the road. Celtics had the best road record. They won 27 games. Marcus Johnson on the free throw line. 18 points so far. Daryl Dawkins with four personal fouls on the bench for the 76ers. He played his best stretch, Daryl did. Uh, he was ineffective the first half. He came out here the second half and was doing a good job. Now the foul problem will keep him there for a while. See, interesting to see if he'll be able to get back into the flow when he gets into the game. Now the Bucks have come back. They were down three at halftime, down by seven early in the third qu uh, period, and now have regained the lead. 77-76. Cheeks on the drive. control on that. He's got 16 points. That's way above his season average of 9.4. He's a veteran. He's been he's been to the big war. Caldwell Jones rejecting Marcus Johnson shot. Cheeks taking it down the other way. Bobby Jones scores and is foul. Oh, he is amazing. Bobby Jones is tough. I, I'll tell you, he, he, he's almost, he would have been a great kamikaze pilot in, in World War II. Because <laughs> he didn't want to come back alive. He just goes in there, and if he, if he died on the way, it'd be all right. They'd, they'd just bury him someplace. 16 points for Jones coming off the bench. 80 to 77. 76ers. And a chance to increase it here, which Jones does. 81 five out of five for the line. Four points, 76ers lead with six minutes left in the third period at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Game one of the best of seven NBA Eastern Conference semifinal. Bridgman, big shot. Big got, shot. He got hot from that point in the first half. And he has 17 points. Ian Jones really putting on a show. Trying to determine perhaps who's the best sixth man in the NBA. You gotta have a good one. You're not gonna be in there. The Jones fadeaway jumper. He's having a great basketball game. 19 points for Jones. 83-79. Marcus Johnson trying to play alley oop in the air. It doesn't work. Caldwell Jones to Cheeks, and Cheeks is fouled by Marcus Johnson. Tough call. Tough call on that one. I think that foul call might bring you up to your feet if you're coaching. Uh, no, I, I, I think it's a mistake for the player to make a stand there. You, you're, you're a forward. You think you're going to take the ball away from an established uh, pro guard. It's probably better off you to give him ground and gone back in and made his uh, stance a little closer to the basket. Try to veer uh, him to one side. That is seven out of eight from the free throw line for Maurice Cheeks. 17 points. And you see his point average on the season is well below that. It shows his playoff average. Right at nine or ten points per game. So he's having a big afternoon. And the 76ers have built their lead back up to six. Junior Bridgman shooting over Julius Irving. Didn't get the rim. Nothing but the backboard. Forced that shot a little bit. He probably was trying to make Dr. J play defense on him. Cheeks. A good timeout. You just call it. Just right. 20 points for Maurice Cheeks. And the 76ers have their biggest advantage of the afternoon. 87 to 79. Timeout at the Spectrum. Back after this. Hey, you cover that Masters thing, don't you? I, I couldn't remember. You told me you get covered it for 19 years on well, the 14th hole or well, we're close. 14 years about, on the 19th hole. What is how, it? How about 14 years on the 17th hole? I know every blade of grass on that 17th oh. at the Augusta National. We'll be looking forward to going back down there. It's one of really the highlights of the sports year. All right.
tonight. 87, 79, 76. It's just kind of crucial right now for the Bucks. Very, very important. You, you can't let this thing get away from you now. You got to keep it at least around the 10 point mark in the fourth quarter. Then you're, you're in an all right shape. In, in a basketball game, there, there are usually three or four uh, streaks. The 76 is in one now. Good shooting percentage. Well, they have virtually doubled the shooting percentage of the Milwaukee Bucks. Milwaukee's got to get something going. they got to find somebody that's hot. Marcus Johnson has done most of the work here in the third period. Buckner going to Junior Bridgman. Over to Buckner. Six seconds on the shot clock, and he got it away. Yes. That, you know how the crowd just kind of quieted down. They could anticipate a kill. That, that'll that help it. Now, if they come up with a good defensive play here and get the ball back again and score, then it'll, it'll be right back into the old ball game. Caldwell Jones. Bad ankle and all on the outside. Seven-footer. Harvey catchings in the game for Milwaukee. Cheeks can't miss. He feels it. He feels it. 22 points for Maurice Cheeks. 13 above his game average. And Bridgman answers. Junior with his seventh basket. He has 19 coming off the bench. Six-point lead. 76ers. 89-83. Still in the third period. Very high scoring game here. Irving, finger out right there. <laughs> 18 points for Irving. It's his first bucket of the second half. Richmond on the drive. Ball knocked out of bounds underneath. Take a look at that finger roll again. A great pass from uh, the center, uh, Caldwell Jones. He's got him inside. He's got the guard on him. They had to switch. He went right up over Moncrief, the finger roll. Like I said, it's not good when young kids try that, but it's fun to watch this guy do it. Milwaukee's ball out of bounds from the overhead camera. Here at the Spectrum, you see Brian Winters on the drive, and he's fouled by Hollis. You notice the defense, that overhead shot's a great one because that defense is coming right in from that weak side, and you get a pretty good panoramic view of what's actually happening. Winners will go to the free throw line. We saw him as two free throws in the final seconds of the first half, which is most unusual. Winners an 86% free throw shooter on the year. Play Buckner. 91-84. Substitute coming into the game. Tony comes in. Hollins goes out for the 76ers. Well, these benches, they just keep sending these great athletes at you uh, time after time, each substitution. You know, as a shooter, as a shooter, as a shooter, he may have missed two, but I don't think he was thinking miss when he stepped up there that time. You know, your Dallas team played well, didn't it, against the better teams in the league, like Milwaukee and Philadelphia. A combination of two things. Uh, sometimes the great teams don't get up for an expansion team, and, and if you're an athlete at all, you, you like to play against the best in the world. Winners with the fadeaway jumper. Caldwell Jones skies for the rebound and sets the backboard to rock it again. I think his ankle said it's all right. Bobby Jones with the fake underneath for the doctor. No basket. No basket. Foul before the shot. That's at the end of the third quarter in Boston. Obviously a big, big surge by the Celtics. That game was tied just a few moments ago. Yeah, they looked like they had a streak we were talking about earlier. Sixers with the ball. Good defense. Threw it away. Bridgman down to Quinn Buckner on the drive. Left-handed layup. Buckner. Seven baskets for Buckner. That's above his season average. 14 points in the game. Four-point lead for the 76ers. Milwaukee is a very good comeback team. The record has showed that this season. They've done an excellent job when they've been behind. Even as late as the final period of game. Uh, they've, they've had a switch there. Now Bryant's guarding him. Bryant's saying, no, no help. Somebody's got to help me out here. Caldwell Jones with one second left on the shot clock. Got it away. And it comes back out to Philadelphia. Here's Tony. Who can shoot? Rush that a little bit. Bridgman soaring past Irving. The doctor took a swipe at him. Mix comes back into the game for Philadelphia. That's three fouls on Julius Irving. Penalty situation now prevails for Milwaukee the rest of this period, which is two minutes and 12 seconds to go. 
Uh, they, they like to take Doc out this time of ball game. Uh, he can get his two or three minutes rest. There's going to be a timeout, and there's also going to be a long break for the uh, quarter. So he, 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 uh, he'll probably put him in with maybe a minute, uh, two minutes gone in this uh, fourth quarter, expecting to finish strong uh, for the remainder of the ball game. Richmond is six out of six from the free throw line. That's who jinxed it. Their free throw shooting hasn't been up to par for this basketball game. 76ers by three with two minutes left to play in the third period, and Cheeks throws it away. Cheeks, by the way, shooting-wise, five for five in the third period and seven out of eight for the game from the field. Block shots. Philadelphia 17 in this game. Milwaukee has four. Bucks can pull within one here if they can get a bucket. Brian Winters is the open shot. Can't hit it from 15 feet. Tipped up. Harvey catching. really going after it. Catching still got it. Trying to get rid of the ball. And finally Mix takes it <laughs> out of his arms. He needed a pair of roller skate. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Tony got the charge. What do you think on this one? He kind of threw it up, probably begging. Now he's down. He's got the ball. He says, hey, Bob, what do I do with this thing? He, he's, he can't travel because his feet, there's nothing in contact, but he's the rear end. Back to live action we go. Bucks with the ball. Again with a chance to pull within the run. They trail 91 to 88. Buckner, 18-footer, got the pick from Catchings. And it apparently was an illegal pick. Well, he was moving pretty good, you know, tit for tat. There's one, one offensive foul at one end, one at the other end. Try to even those things out if you can. Harvey Catchings has four. A minute 15 left in the quarter. Andrew Tony. Again, they get Jones open. That might be his first open miss. He's been open all day. Picks. Save the rebound. Jones has it blocked on him by Catchings. That puts it's it an up. offensive foul. Puts it up a second time, and Mix finally puts in the rebound. More guys are down than up. Don Nelson can't believe they didn't call a foul. No harm, no foul, they say. Look at it again. You thought there was a foul there? That could have been an offensive foul. Bobby jumped into it. Mixes, mixes uh, uh, he doesn't feel that stuff underneath. He just likes that. Catching likes that contact. And we go back to live action. Catchings with the miss. Tony with the rebound. Five-point lead for the 76ers. 30 seconds left in the quarter. Well, the fans are screaming zone. Are they playing a zone? Yes. This is the zone. Now they're not. They're back into the man-to-man. -man. Buckner with a one-on-one -on -one confrontation. Tony got it off with one second left of the 11, shot clock. 11 seconds. They'll go for one. Winner slows it down. Five seconds left in the quarter. Bridgman. So they want to get the ball to where Buckner, he's going to take it right inside the three-point line and hits it. Win Buckner with one second to go in the quarter. Amazing how they can convert with that clock going down in our league. 16 points for Buckner. Milwaukee shaves the 76ers lead to three as we finish the third period. The preceding announcement was brought to you by the National Basketball Association. Be sure and stay tuned for the MVP at the conclusion of the game. Right now, I got to like cheeks as we go into the fourth period. Well, there, there are a lot of guys. This is the nitty gritty part. It's a guy that can come through from this point on that'll probably get it. There's your third period statistics with the Sixers with the edge in the field goal and the free throw departments. Brian Winters. Marcus Johnson. Moncrief with the rebound. Marcus Johnson, 20 points, 10 rebounds through three quarters. Dr. J, 20 points, 7 rebounds, and 5 blocks. This has been some kind of game. Winters on the drive over Irving. That's a pro move. Took off the wrong foot, extended himself, launched it just over the outreached arm of Caldwell. 93-92, Dr. J underneath, up with the left hand. That's where they like to get him, down on that... On that right-hand side, let him operate. That gives him 22 points. Bucks, by the way, were the NBA's best team, or certainly one of the best teams, at the comeback. Bridgman on the stuff. Lightning quickness by Junior Bridgman. Milwaukee won nine games on the road in which they trailed going into the final period of play. They and the Celtics were the best in that department. 
Bryce inside the mix. Foul by Bridgman. Take another look at uh, Bridgman's dunk here. But you get isolated over here on the side. Unless you have a predetermined type of defense, you usually like to force the guy to the middle, not let him have that baseline. Here's Daryl Dawkins coming back into the game. This will be interesting to see how he responds with foul problems and sitting on the bench that long. He's working with four fouls on him. One point game, 76ers lead it, 95-94. Game two will be here at the Spectrum Tuesday. Then the series shifts to Milwaukee for games three and four, Friday and Sunday. 76ers lost it, two on one break. Moncrief on the drive. And Dawkins winds up with the ball. Boy, there's contact there someplace. Marcus Johnson getting up very slowly, very shakily. Richardson, who has come into the game, has it blocked. Harvey Catchings going in for the block. But he got Porter Richardson, foul, too. Yeah, and got him on the head. Oh, there's a shove right there. Uh, Marcus Johnson didn't fall by himself. Dawkins gave him a little shove. That's two team fouls on the Bucks here in the final period. Don Nelson. Oh, technical. Technical foul called on the Milwaukee bench. I don't believe it was a Nelson, was it? I don't know. He may have said something. Of course, he came way out of the court. He may have asked him how his family was doing or something. See, how many did you have this year? I don't know. Didn't they, start, didn't they stop counting after 20? I think they stopped counting when I got my first one. Now, sometimes a coach will take an intentional technical, will he not? Well, I, I think that the majority of time, uh, I had one called on me this year in the last two minutes of the ballgame, and I don't think that's ever happened before. But most of the time, they're in the first half, and they're for, they're for huffing and puffing and, you know, blowing up like a big frog and trying to get the thing uh, in uh, focus. Well, they say the foul was called on Brian Winters. And Dr. J will go to the free throw line. It was either before or after that shot. <laughs> 76ers leading by one, 95-94. As you lose a game here and you've lost the home court advantage, so the pressure is really on Philadelphia. 23 for Julius Irving. Well, the mentality of this thing, usually when you play two in a row, uh, you, you want to come away with at least a split, and, and you have a good chance to do that with the next ball club. So the pressure is really on that home home team. If they uh, if they lose one of these ball games, then they've given up the home court advantage. Now Richardson, who was fouled in the act of shooting, taking his two shots. And that gives the 76ers a four-point advantage, 98-94, with 10 minutes and 28 seconds to go. Moncrief being met before he gets to half court by Tony. Three down, Clint. Clint, it's going to be on you. Down to 10. Boise here in the background occasionally is out of Cunningham. Shouting instructions from the bench. Three-point play yes. by Brian Winters. First three-pointer of the game. And it's a big one. That trims it to one, 98-97. Dr. J got away from Marcus Johnson. Ball stolen by Winters. Down it comes to Marcus on the fly. No way Tony was going to get to that one. Look at the contact underneath Catchings and Dawkins. Well, he didn't mean to do that. You know, he just said, uh, sorry, but your head's in the way. Yeah. He, it's live, and Irving goes in for an uncontested layup. Catchings is still looking at stars. Now, I think that uh, that's possible to see that, and I, I think that now there's a mistake. That's just, a, that's just a, a mental mistake on the Bucks. A costly basket from Milwaukee's standpoint. Timeout being called. It's a 20-second injury timeout here for Catchings. Well, they got within one, and now they're down three again. Here's that last bucket. And a big basket it was. 76ers by three here at the Spectrum. Catchings being attended to. We can look at what happened to Catchings again. It is getting a little rough out there, almost too rough. It's, a, it's physical. It's up to the referees now to clean this thing up. That, that was uh, an, almost an intentional elbow and uh, things like that. There's no place in sport for things like that. 102 to 99, the 76ers lead it. It's on you, Andrew. Marcus Johnson on the Last outside for the game. Milwaukee Bucks. Nine minutes left to play in the game. Game one of the NBA Eastern Conference semifinal series. Here's winners. 
22-foot jumper. Mix and Moncrief with the rebound. Let's see who it goes to. They're saying white. It'll be 76ers ball. A little bit hard. This is the way the two benches have responded. We said they're probably the two best benches in the league. And they played to just about a standoff. Uh, yes, points per minute. The uh, Milwaukee bench is probably ahead. Irving shot air ball. Hit Mix with the rebound. You got to root Mix out of there. You can't let him establish position under that board or he'll do that to you all night long. Five point lead now for the Philadelphia 76ers. Lanier. Off to Bridgman. Jump shooting over Dr. J. Bridgman has responded well today to the, to the uh, clutch situations. 24 points for Bridgman coming off the bench. I knew we'd have a good one today. 104-101. Philadelphia leading by three. Mix has been with the 76er club now eight years. Andrew Tony. He was a free agent. Always enheartening, you know, for those free agents Shot to get a chance. down to one as Mix misses the layup. Bridgman down court to Sidney Moncrief. Dishes it off to Marcus Johnson. And Dawkins grabs the rebound. Richardson on the drive. Lays it up. Won't go. Rebound Irving. Well, he earned that one. That's a great play. 27 for Irving. He just earned it. He followed through. Lanier made a commitment. He jumped to try to block the shot and didn't pay any attention to the big guy coming in the middle. 76ers up by five as we're back to live action. Marcus Johnson on the drive across the lane is hammered. Try to make Marcus Beach from the outside. He, he's best good when he's in around the basket when he's driving. Mix picks up the foul. Buckner comes back into the game. First team foul of the 76ers. The Bucks have two here in the final period with seven minutes and 22 seconds to go. Two shots for Marcus Johnson. Four out of four from the free throw line. He has 22 points. He averaged 24.6 and 10 rebounds per game against Philadelphia this season. Had a great year. It's a field goal shooting percentage around 55, which is rather astronomical for a non-center. Milwaukee will be disappointed in their free throw shooting when they look at this thing tomorrow. Pass underneath to Richardson. He gets an easy layup. Off the blind screen. A little bit. Milwaukee go on the other end. Marcus Johnson misses the little hook shot, tips it up, and it still won't go. He needs some help. There are three, four people standing back watching him out there all alone. Dr. J again with the finger roll. He's fouled. And will go to the line. Boy, the fans just see that big swoop coming, don't they? Yeah, he starts yeah. his move. Well, you can hear it. Almost sounds like a wind tunnel through a big building like this. But they're all going, woo. You know, they're getting ready for it. Julius, three out of four from the free throw line. 27 points. Celtics are 12 ahead of the Bulls in the final period. 113 to 101. In the other Eastern Conference semifinal, don't forget doubleheader action coming up on CBS. Third game of the series. You'll see either Los Angeles, Houston, or Kansas City, Portland. Moncrief back in the ball game. One ten to one oh two. This is the biggest lead the 76ers have enjoyed in the second half. Lanier comes back with a bucket. They don't give up easy, these Milwaukee Bucks. Oh, no, no. No, they won't give up. And they know what it's like now to be in a tough seven-game series, which they were in last year with Seattle. Even though they lost it, they had the experience. They've been preparing for this second season for a long time. They know that they're a good ball club. Mix. Shot clock down to seven seconds. Mix moves across the lane. Lanier with the rebound. Down court to Junior Bridgman. Rejected by Dawkins. And a foul called underneath. Foul is on Richardson as we look at it again. Richardson just trying to get out of the way. Yeah, it wasn't a defensive stance. As they turned their back, and it's easy for the referee to tell that. Six minutes, 24 seconds left to play in the game. 76ers by six. Big after.
afternoon for Dr. J. And don't forget that heavyweight fight next Saturday as CBS debuts CBS Sports Saturday. Brett Musburger will be hosting each week. And one of our highlights will be the match between the two young men, both looking for a title shot. 29 points for Dr. J. Six minutes, 24 seconds remaining. The word on Harvey Catchings is he suffered a bruised jaw. So apparently it is nothing serious when he took that uh, elbow from Daryl Dawkins. It would be serious for one of us. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <He> took it. <laughs> well, he does look intimidated, doesn't he? Oh, he, yeah. He, I think we can eat bale hay without taking the wire off the bale. <laughs> I never quite heard it put that way. <laughs> I don't want to make him mad at me, I'll tell you that. Junior Bridgman on the line. This is a rough game, and it's no place for the weak of heart out there. You leave the timid at home when you get into something like this. This would be 25 points for Bridgman. 110 to 106. Foul situation. 76ers have two team fouls. Milwaukee has three. And it looks like it's going down to the wire. Cheeks underneath Irving. Going one on one with Sidney Moncrief, and Moncrief fouled him. He probably can't play him any better than that at the Moncrief size. He, he did everything right, and the guy still dominated him inside. Here comes Bobby Jones back into the game for Mix. So Jones has got his rest, and he has been hot. He'll be a man to watch down the stretch here. Seven baskets and five free throws coming off the bench for 19. And Julius is about to hit 30. Is he the MVP this year, you think, in your opinion? I don't know. There's so many great ones. You know, there hasn't been a non-center win the MVP since 1964 when Oscar won. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a big man's game, and the, the centers get most of the attention. But he's had quite a year, and of course, if they do win the championship, he'd have to be in strong contention. 31 points for Julius Irving, the doctor. And a six-point 76ers lead as you look from above the spectrum. Pass inside to Lemire with a sweeping left-handed hook shot. Bob Lemire. The big guy responded to that. 17 for Lanier. And the lead is trimmed to four. Look at that action inside. Dawkins and Lanier are tandem. Bobby Jones drops it off to Richardson. Tipped in by Dawkins. Don Nelson is claiming that Dawkins walked all over his man. I think they're also complaining it was offensive goaltending, but I don't think it was. Foul called underneath the basket as Buckner tried to pass off to Moncrief. It's on Richardson. Final score, Boston defeated Chicago 121 to 109, so the Celtics take the lead in that best of seven series. Here's Lanier. Richman from the corner. Oh boy, he, he has responded today. Both he and Bobby Jones. 28 points for Bridgman. Sixers leading by four with five minutes and 15 seconds to go. Cheeks moving into the corner on Buckner. Trying to get it inside to Dawkins. He does. That may be a little bit out of his range. On that jump shot, Marcus Johnson clears the glass. I'm sure Billy would have liked him inside to go with his strength in, in the post. There's Bobby Jones on the court. Jones did it. Buckner picked it up. Ten seconds on the shot clock as Bridgman hits another one. They're going to have to stop him. Bobby's chasing all over. He got in the way of the pass into the center, but he left him open. That time he responded again. They found him. 30 points for Bridgman coming off the bench. And a two-point game. You can feel the electricity in this building start to pile up now. Crowd's getting a little bit tense. Cheeks trapped in the corner, tries to drive the baseline. His last touch, they say, by Cheeks. As Buckner tried to slap it away, he slapped it off Cheeks' knee. That's some defense right there. He, he was not going to let him have that baseline, and he, he just wouldn't be denied that area. Hollins comes back into the game. Going with his experience. And Caldwell Jones is in. Dawkins comes out. So does Richardson. Lanier the pivot. Marcus Johnson hits. Tenth basket for Johnson. He's got 26, and now we're tied at 114, and the crowd is buzzing. Billy wants number five runs. Catchings is getting set to come back into the game. Bruce John. 
Abby Jones controls. Cheeks with the shot. Julius Irving with the rebound goal. And we welcome those of you who have been watching the Boston-Chicago game. I'm Frank Lieber along with Dick Mata here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. We've got quite a game working. 76ers lead by two. Marcus Johnson is just tied it. Well, they're responding to each other. 28 points now for Marcus Johnson. 76ers in white. The Milwaukee Bucks in green. Cheeks losing the ball. Slapped out of bounds by Sidney Moncrief. It'll be Philadelphia's to throw in. And Harvey Catchings comes into the game. Three minutes and 20 seconds left to play. Now this substitution is predetermined. Uh, Coach Nelson said before the game that he was going to take him out with about three minutes to go, give him a rest, and then bring him back in fresh to finish up for the remainder of the ball game. 76ers call time with the score tied at 1-16. forget nighttime coverage of the Masters Thursday and Friday night highlights and then complete coverage Saturday and Sunday afternoon the world's most prestigious golf tournament here on CBS how do you work that golf at night well we just do highlights they do it during the daytime that's the block shot statistic and the Sixers have tied a club record today with 19 block shots score tied at 116 Lionel Hollins on the outside off to Bobby Jones and he is fouled by the situation that's a big factor now. That was the fifth team foul on Milwaukee, so Philadelphia will be in the penalty the rest of the way. 76ers have three team fouls, and Jones has had a great afternoon, as usual, coming off the bench. He has scored 19 points. So has his opposite, Junior Bridgman, the sixth man for the Milwaukee Bucks, who's hit 30. Jones' first free throw miss. Five out of six. This is where coaching gets fun, doesn't it, in the last couple minutes? You know, I love this. This is when your blood starts to boil and you get right into the ball game. It's a very interesting phenomenon that will take place now. There will be some players that won't want to shoot. Some of them will want it. Uh, that, that's, it's going to be very interesting to see who, who takes the big shots for these two ball players. Very unusual for Bobby Jones to miss two free throws. Here's our overhead shot. High above the spectrum floor. Give you a good coach's viewpoint of this game. Love Love that, yeah. from the outside. Bridgman with the shot air ball. Well, Jones grabs it. That's his first miss. I think he hurried that a little bit. Teams have been roaring up and down the court, and they finally slowed it down just a little bit. Hollins has the shot blocked on him by Harvey Catchings. It'll be the 76ers ball out of bounds. Score still tied, and we have two minutes and 49 seconds left to play. Bob Lanier comes back in for Catchings. That's his little rest, and that, that was predetermined. Uh, Coach Nelson said he was going to do that, and he did, and they didn't lose ground while he was out, so I, I, I'm sure that they feel pretty good about their situation right now. Bucks are calling timeout with two minutes and 49 seconds to go. We could have overtime here in Philadelphia today. The score tied. At Shot blocker par excellence, Harvey Catchings of Milwaukee gets one here. And that's a good point right there. He, he went straight up and blocked it. The ball happened to fall out of bounds. We didn't swat on through. He didn't try to send it up into the bleachers. And you give your team a better chance to recapture that ball. And you also don't get in foul trouble by carrying on through. The 76ers have 20 block shots today. That's a team record. Detroit's 21 blocks this year is a league high. And of course, the turnover picture. Bobby Jones will inbound for the Philadelphia 76ers, 249 to go and the score is tied here at the spectrum game one of the eastern conference semifinal playoffs irving has the hook shot block. jones with the rebound two people jumped at the shot and left uh, bobby jones there all alone that's what happens so many times when you leave your feet 21 points for bobby jones bucks in the front court trail by two now the crowd chanting defense sydney moncrief starts a move on irving dishes it off to buckner Traveling, Moncrief. Bucks turn it over. Big possession, big turnover. Plenty of time. Milwaukee applying some backcourt pressure here. Hollins and Cheeks, the backcourt duo for the Philadelphia 76ers of Billy Cunningham. They trail most of the first half, although they did lead at intermission by three. Went by as much as nine here in the second half. Inside to Irving. It's going to be Philadelphia's ball. Bobby Jones has been everywhere. Yeah, he's all over. I'll tell you what. He's, he's having a great game. Pass inside to 
Julia serving. A whistle. As you look at the replay there, a foul is called on Marcus Johnson for the Bucks, And Irving will go to the free throw line. That's four on Marcus Johnson. The penalty situation. 14 baskets and seven out of eight from the free throw line. For Julius Irving. That gives the 76ers a three-point advantage, 119, 116. One more. One more to bring it to even. Right now it's a three-pointer with the uh, you know, with the three-point play, you're still even really anymore. Irving with 34, including several spectacular soars. Typical Dr. J moves. Well, missed two out of three. Three-point advantage for the 76ers with two minutes exactly left to play in the game. And Billy Cunningham over on the far side shouting instructions to his troops. He ought to have his gym shoes on the way he's moving around today. <laughs> Buckner inside to Lanier who almost lost it. Shot clock down to five seconds. Have to do something with it. Bridgman with two seconds on the clock. Hits that's it. something with it right there. That's something. That's a, right, that's a heck of a response. Twelve baskets and eight free throws. 30 points for Bridgman unofficially. And he didn't start the game. We're talking about the importance of the two six men. They have been dynamite, both of them. Jones and Bridgman. Irving. Angle. Absolutely impossible angle. He was behind the basket. 37 for Dr. J. Come down now to execution of this set play. 115 left to play in the game. Lanier driving on Caldwell Jones. Left-handed hook. Good. You see him do that sometimes, you wonder why he won't do it more often inside. Beautiful sweeping hook shot. 76ers by one with a minute left to play in the game. Cheeks over on the far side to Dr. J. They tried to hit Jones inside. Here's Munt, free from the drive. Two points. That's a good play. He, he, he dodged two people. He knew that Dr. J was on his back, floating in there, and he, he brought it home. He drove it home. Bucks lead by one with 49 seconds to go. They don't want to give calls time. Now this game has left everyone limp here at the spectrum. Look at Montgomery, second year man. Look at the body control. He got by two people. He just he just felt the, the dock on his back and he, uh, he just that was a magnificent play. Billy Cunningham thinking things over right now. These two teams obviously are going to get to know each other very well over the next two weeks, almost like members of your family. Well, it, it comes down to that. This is what makes the playoffs so great. It's a, it's, a, it's a heck of an event to be involved in. It. You get to know these guys. It's almost like going to practice. You look into your bowl of cereal, and there's Dr. J's face staring up at you. See, we can listen in to what uh, Cunningham is telling his troops in the huddle. Here. Run a straight five. He's making the entry pass. Bobby, I want you here. Doc, you're here. Andrew, you're the second man. Daryl here. Hit. Now, if you can't hit, hit the post, forwards to the baseline. Okay, screen down, pop out. Okay, if you can't hit, any question in your mind, you have to screen down. Now, we'll run our regular uh, side out of bounds. We'll have five, four, one. Bobby, I want you popping, though, this time. And Lionel, pop, uh, Maurice popping in the corner. Uh, Doc, you. Andrew, you're taking the ball out of bounds. Okay, we have Doc here. Right now, right 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 are they making up a player? Is that a play they already have? That's a good point. This has all uh, been re-rehearsed. This is part of their game plan. The clipboard and the pen now, and just to reaffirm the players, their responsibility to, to make sure that there aren't any mistakes. But he's not inventing anything now. As soon as we finish here at the Spectra, we'll be switching to either the Houston-Los Angeles game or the Kansas City-Portland game. Third game of the miniseries between those clubs. Depending on what part of the country you happen to be, you'll get one of those two games. An interesting substitution here, uh, Tony, possibly for his offense. 76ers trail by one with 40 seconds to go. Irving goes up for the shot, and he is hacked by Quinn Buckner. Don't reach. Don't reach in on situations like that. Make him earn it. Don't send him to the line for three points. And that's the limit for Quinn Buckner. 
six fouls, six fouls on Buckner, who has fouled out of the game. That's a big loss because he's been directing their offense. He's been getting the ball up the court against pressure. Number 11, Caldwell Jones. Tony and Dawkins are out. Two the other line. Ryan Winters is getting ready to come back into the game for Milwaukee. The Bucks have uh, Lanier in there. They've got Marcus Johnson, Moncrief, Winters, and Bridgman. Interesting, as you say, to see who they do play in these clutch situations. These are the guys they really count on. Well, he brought uh, Tony in for his offense. Now he's uh, substituting with uh, Lionel Hollis to get the defense and the rebounding. Penalty in effect. One to tie. Two to go into the lead. Drew a lot of iron on that one. Now, got the nice roll. He's 8 out of 11 from the free throw line, plus 15 baskets. Unofficially, 38 points. Score is tied at 122. 38 seconds left on the clock. Referees were uh, reconfirming the fact that he gets 3 for 2. Or in this case now, 2 to make 1. First one to miss the next two. He's missed three out of his last four attempts. That's unusual for the duck. This shot to give the 76ers the lead with 38 seconds to go. Second shot clock 10. Marcus Johnson, 16 feet, doesn't hit Marty Jones with a big rebound. They'll have to foul someone. Irving to Cheeks. 15 seconds to go. Moncrief coming out on Collins. I don't think particularly they wanted to foul him. Well, it doesn't make a lot of difference. You have to foul someone. If he makes both of them, you're in a three-point situation. If he makes one of them, you can, you can tie and go to overtime with a regular basket or win it with a three-point shot. He's got winners in the ballgame now. Milwaukee goes to the three-point. Ryan Winters is their three-point man. He's made one. This is Holland's first free throw attempt of the afternoon. He has seven points. He's a 73% free throw shooter on the year. Two-point lead for the 76ers. And one more. Timeout call by the Milwaukee Bucks. As Don Nelson, John Killalay, and company will get organized here. Obviously, uh, I guess obvious to me, is it obvious to you? You now set up the three-point play? Well, you don't have very many uh, alternatives right now, Frank. You've got to go, almost go with it, or drive hard, and they'll they'll step back and let you have two if you go at the basket hard. And it's very difficult to get a three-point shot off when the opponent knows you're after that. So they, they've got to set something up to try to free, I would imagine, Brian Winters, or they could use him as a decoy and try to get someone else open. In Philadelphia this afternoon. Hope you've enjoyed it. And these are some of the people who have helped us put it together and bring it to you. No matter where you happen to be across the countryside, it's been a good one. Game two, Tuesday night here in Philadelphia. Then the series shifts to Milwaukee for games three and four on Friday and on Sunday. And of course, the 76ers do have the home court advantage. So if it goes the full seven games, Two weeks from today, it will wind up with Game 7 right here at the Spectrum. You play your 82 to get that home court advantage, and it's a shame when you lose it. Nelson, since this is your broadcasting debut, you've had as much fun as coaching? Oh, I, I tell you, my palms are sweating. I'm in the ball game. I, I'm out there with the coaches, and it's, uh, there's nothing like it to be right here and be part of it. 125-122. The Bucks need a three-point play to send it into overtime. We have 11 seconds left to play in regulation. If they don't get the three-pointer or the two-point field goal and a foul, 76 is what have won it. Collins knocks it out of bounds. Milwaukee's ball. We only had one man coming to the ball. One second off the clock on that inbounds pass. Here's the Bucks calling another timeout. Don Nelson wants another time. Now, why so? Well, they're, they're in a different situation now. They're closer to the basket. They're, they're foul line extended. And, and that play uh, evidently broke down. He didn't like the look of the thing, and so he, he wanted to regroup his troops and get it going right. Bucks have one timeout left. Philadelphia has two timeouts left. This game has seen 15 lead changes, and we have had five times. It was all Milwaukee in the early going. 
76ers caught up just before halftime. Led an intermission, 66-63, then build that lead up to eight or nine points. There's the 76er huddle, and again, we'll try to pick up what Billy Cunningham is telling the troops. He's down on the floor now. He's getting serious. They got marbles over there, Jack. You better. I don't know. <laughs> Well, they're right here now. This is very important for these people. All right, how do you set up your defense? You're cutting. What are you going to tell your guys? Well, you've got to watch the three-point shot. You've got to try to keep it out of Brown Winter's hands. It's the most obvious. Uh, and make them earn it. Don't, don't do what you're saying, silly. don't foul it. Whatever you do, don't, 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 don't foul it. Uh, you can foul now, and if they make both of them, you still have a one-point lead. So uh, you just don't let him handle the ball. has hit 35% of that area of his three-point shots this year. He's got one this afternoon. He's one of the best in the league in what he does. It wouldn't surprise me if Richmond got this shot, however. Ten seconds left in the game. Clock doesn't start until the ball touches an inbounds player. A steal by Bobby Jones on the inbounds pass. And that's going to be it. Has run down to three seconds. And winners fouled one of the 76ers deliberately. This was the only chance Milwaukee had. So a big mistake, the turnover where Moncrief threw away the inbounds pass. And Bobby Jones was there again. There wasn't a lot of movement out here, and it was surprising that they that they just didn't seem to come to the basketball. They, they kind of faded away. Is on the free throw line. Penalty in effect. You'll get one more. But he misses. Two Milwaukee still has a timeout. This would give him a four point advantage. Long throw over the backboard. Ball game is over. You surprised they didn't call time? Maybe they didn't have one. No, we had it unofficially. That we had one left. Showed that they had one, but that may have been wrong. That was strictly unofficial. Well, I'd have to say the Miller High Life Most Valuable Player Award has to go to Bobby Jones. Don't you agree? Well, I, I, I thought he had a fantastic ball game today. So the Miller $1,000 donation will be made to the Special Olympics on behalf of Bobby Jones of the Philadelphia 76ers. Our final score here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, the 76ers 125 and the Bucks 122. For Dick Mata, this is Frank Lieber. The NBA on CBS will continue after this word from your local station.